Hello everyone, Kent Bressler here. I want to welcome you to Kent's Kidney Stories. During our time together um, over these podcasts, I'd like to uh, discuss kidney disease. I'd like to tell you about my journey as a transplant patient, but also talk about dialysis, kidney donation, and just about anything else that might be of interest. Kent's Kidney Stories podcast endorsed and sponsored by kidneysolutions.org. Hello everybody, Kent Bressler, back to do some podcasting today. Been having an interesting week, interesting weeks, actually an interesting month. So, I have a great guest today. We're going to talk about kidney donation, and uh, I'd like to start with prayer. Good morning, where I am, Heavenly Father. We're grateful for your loving care. Life seems so difficult sometimes, but uh, we know that you're here for us every day. We give you thanks for all you have given us, and we ask that you help those who are unable to help themselves. Our individual kidney journeys are all consuming and there is no end. Give each of us the strength to overcome all adversity. And we pray for your love and guidance as we battle kidney disease. It is our prayer also that you would send a kidney donor for Mike Williams. In your holy name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm. so, so I just uh, uh, just finished up, well, we just finished up with Easter and now we're we're actually on to announcing uh, that we've had two successful transplants in the last two weeks. And uh, Ryan Jodice out in New York was transplanted last week. He's already home. Yeah, he received a deceased donor. We're grateful for that. And Jessica, Jessica Contreras was transplanted at the University Hospital. Jessica I would say, has been a long time friend of Kidney Solutions. She has two children that she's actually seen halfway grow up. Took her almost six years to get a donor. We had several several attempts at living donors, just didn't work out. But my my hope is is that that he, uh, she can do very well. She's home now and uh, ready to return to work, and her kidney is functional. So praise God on all of that. All right, so. We have our, you know, so many friends out there who are patiently waiting for a living donor. If you go to our website, kidneysolutions.org. And uh, we're going to talk to one of them this morning. Gentleman from the San Antonio area. His name is Mike Williams. Mike is uh, on the registry at University Hospital. And if you are find this very interesting, if you would consider donating or know of someone who is interested in donating to Mike, we'd like to give us a call at Kidney Solutions. That's 830-285-2140. 830-285-2140. Mike, you got the kids to school? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing well. You know, it's it, the world's busy, right? It just keeps going, no matter if you got kidney disease or not. It keeps never going. stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me a little background on your kidney disease journey. I know you've been on it for a while, and let's. I mean, you you got a fantastic story. Kind of give me a little bit of that. Um, uh, I was misdiagnosed at the age of six years old. Uh, well, actually, one, but they found it at six. Um, with a urinary tract infection, but they said it was just a common cold. Um, so by the time I was 14, it had reflux so bad into my kidneys that I was going to need a transplant. And, um, I, at 14, I did receive a deceased donor transplant and, um, that lasted until two or 1995. And then I got transplanted again. Um, and then that lasted until 2008 when I had a stroke. 
and found out that my blood pressure was extremely high. And then I was transplanting in 2010. That brings us up to date now, 2019 um, was when I started feeling sick again. And so um, they found out that I had some, um, ah, what do they call it? Uh, uh, something attached to my kidney antibodies. Oh um, yeah, that, you're that my yeah, body. The antibodies my were body yeah, formed. okay. Yeah. Got it. And um they formed and were fighting off this kidney and they go, "Well, you'll have 6 months to a year to get ready for dialysis, get all your stuff in order." And I'm like, "Okay, it, it ended up being 6 weeks." Mm. Um that's how fast this went and um so now I've been just you know, doing dialysis. It started with hemo um, through my, my jugular vein. Um, and I had septic, I went septic three times. Um, once my blood pressure, when I went to the hospital was 70 over 56, which if anybody knows, that's really, really dangerously low. That's way low. Very, very low. Um, yeah. And so, um, I couldn't even keep my head up. I was bobbing and weaving and sleeping and, um, so then I finally got my port in for my HD, uh, or my PD, sorry. Um, and, uh, it's been working great. I've had two times where I've had, per, um, pericarditis, which is inflammation of the, of the peritoneum. And, yeah. Per uh, peritonitis. Yeah. Peritonitis. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's been a couple of battles, but it's been, you know, Pretty smooth, pretty smooth. So, so how many how many kids do you have? I have two. I have two, and what are their ages? Roughly? Um, I have an eighteen year old, and I have a sixteen year old. Okay, so <laughs> they're uh, they're still at home and work working with you. What do they think about your kidney disease? Do they understand it? <laughs> Um, they do. My youngest one helps me get my stuff together. Um, my oldest one will help me get my bags and, and do that type of stuff. Um, they're very conscientious of, um, my, my disease and my issues. Um, they're handling it quite well. Surprisingly, I've had to go to the hospital a few times. Um, and I think that my son, my youngest son taking um a medical class has helped him a lot because um you know he's using that as kind of a thing for school to help him understand what's going on with me so um and then my oldest son um he's working he's going to school so he's he's busy but he'll help at night so um that's kind of they're they're both worried about me, obviously, um, but uh, they take it very good. That's a that's a real blessing you have there. Yes, Having those two two boys there. That's yeah. amazing because most people have to fight this thing, you know, on their own. Yeah, uh, Dallas is is not easy. Matter of fact, uh, some people say it's uh, it's so difficult that sometimes they want to give up on it. You know. So where are you at in that process? It's difficult because, um, you know, there's so many parameters that you have to have, you know, going into this. And, you know, they want you to, um, you know, try and control things from your end. But when your body stops doing that, um, like in blood work and stuff, it's kind of frustrating because, you know, they have these parameters set out there for you as a kidney patient. But if you're, you know, if this is too off here, or your phosphorus or your your potassium or this and that, um, it just makes it kind of difficult. You have to change your whole world. Your whole diet has to change. And um, being part of Italian really stinks because phosphorus <laughs> is huge. Phosphorus is a huge part of our diet. <laughs> 
because yeah. it comes in cheese, it comes in food, or meats. Um, so I have to be real careful what I eat. Um, it's a lot of chicken, um, a lot of a lot of tuna. Um, so it's just you know you got to watch everything though anymore, even vegetables. You know, it has certain They're things high, in them. They can be high in phosphorus. And, but yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, you think about all, all, all the processes that you're going through right now. You, the importance here is, is that I think you're dreaming and praying for a kidney transplant. That's really what you want, another kidney transplant. I have faith that God's going to bring one to me or he'll or he'll heal me. So it's it's one of the two. That's the only way I'm going to get a kidney. So, um. You know, he he's got that all planned out, and I'm That's just correct. going through the road. That's correct. What 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 we say here, kidney solutions, is you know you don't you'll never find him. He'll send them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so so I I'm I'm of the feeling here, if people uh, understand this this whole process. That after you've been transplanted, the second or third transplants are very, very difficult, but they can happen and they and they should happen. You're a young man. You're, you, you know, an 18 year old and a 16 year old and, you know, a, a lifetime. Are you working? I work part time. Yes. OK, good. See, so not, I'm sure you'd like to get back in the flow of things because dialysis oh, does yeah. not allow that. I don't care what anybody says, being at home or in it it crimps your style and it it limits yeah. limits your availability and your ability and i yeah. i suspect you don't feel that well is that correct um no um i've been battling some uh nausea symptoms and um it comes and goes you know um but um yeah it's it's been a battle i want to go to work because you know um that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be a provider. You know, that's my job. And yeah, that's, uh, that's it's right. very difficult. It's very difficult for a man to be, um, you know, 235 pounds when he was healthy and working for a steel company and then go down to 153 pounds and can't do anything. Um, have, you, have you had anybody in the, you know, just in the past, say, six months uh, that's had an interest in donating to you that you know of? My son, uh, the oldest one, is emphatic about it. Um, it um, he, uh, we're still trying to figure out uh, whether it's going to be a good idea or not because he's high-functioning autistic, so we're trying to fi figure out, um, sorry, if he... Uh, understands completely what it is and what it entails who are you working with in that respect the transplant nobody, nobody. have nobody. you discussed that openly with your nephrologist and uh, the the transplant team no um, i no i've spoken to uh davida about it and they said they were going to get a hold of somebody so now well, i think that's something that needs to be explored and i would suggest that you you know you have a regular nephrologist is that correct plus the yes. at the clinic yeah okay well i would i would approach both of them if i if i were you okay, okay. and and just allow that just allow the process to happen all right because right. we want the best and they're not going to they're not going to do anything to jeopardize him that's that's right. for sure that's yeah, either going to be a straight yes or a straight no right Right. Anybody else that you can think of out there that's no, no. Okay. When Are I you... first got, when I first got hit with this, um, the kidney, uh, place, um, San Antonio kidney disease center sent me a 800 number flyer, um, in the mail so I could give it out and to, you know, a couple people or whatever. Um, but, I got up in front of church and uh, my with my pastor and he had me bring it and he announced it at all. And I had a few people that were interested, but then, <laughs> then uh, some things happened in their lives or whatever it changed. Sure. Uh, 
they ended up leaving the church and going somewhere else. Um, and then I had one person try and then it was a straight no. So, uh, because they ended up having kidney stones. So, okay. Well, we're going to, we're going to try very hard to, to find somebody through kidney solutions. And we've sent you flyers and all that kind of stuff that we're doing. We're doing this podcast. Perfect. But I just want to tell people that are listening, you know, this struggle here that we're we're going through with with Mike is not not only difficult, it's uh, it's heart wrenching. Mm-hmm. This man needs needs a donor. Now, if you can't donate, if you don't feel the urge to call us and talk about donating, at least spread the word. There's mm-hmm. plenty of room for uh, folks out there to get the word from you if you'll you'll put it out. Mm-hmm. If you want to call, you just need to call me at, at uh, Kidney Solutions, 830-285-2140, and we'll discuss this whole process with you and make you comfortable and lead you to a point where you can get good donate to uh, Mike. All right, Mike, let me let me ask you this. Do you honestly, uh, in general... What is your strength level? How, how do you how do you really function during the day, uh, mm-hmm. mentally and physically? What's what's your day like? You know what? I wake up and I pray every morning, and thank God that He's given me a breath in my body, and I go off of faith. I mean, um, that's what it boils down to. I believe that He's going to get me something. I believe there's a reason why I'm going through this. Um, You know, just like we talked about at church uh, last Sunday, um, you know, everyone has a road. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, God, and then there's the devil. And people ask me, well, People who are non-believers go, well, why is, if there's a God, why is God letting this happen to you? And um, I said, he's not letting it happen. I said, the devil's letting it happen. He's going to fix it. So, um, you know, it's kind of strange. I have people at church go, man, how can you just believe so much and have faith in so much when you can't see it? And I said, well, because, you know, you say that you, you see it in everyday life, but you don't, you take it for granted. Um, people go to work and believe, have faith that they're going to get there okay and have a job. They don't think about it because they just, you know, I got a job to get to and da, da, da. they go through their day and it goes by so fast, it's over. Um, you have faith that you're going to have a paycheck that your company's not going to go out from underneath you. But you don't think about these things on a constant basis. It's just an everyday thing that you go through. But if you think about it, it's all tied to faith. It's just in a different way. You know, that's, <laughs> it is profound because that's a, the only thing that really brings you along in this, in this journey. People don't understand how difficult kidney disease is. They look at you and they say, you know, how do you feel? You know, well, it's not a feeling thing. It's actually mm-hmm. a survival thing at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and You're you absolutely don't... right. And people say, oh, you look good. And I'm like, on the inside, I'm like, oh, I feel like crud. <laughs> well, that see, that's that's what people will come. They just don't see it. If you take a right. look at a room full of people, you can't pick out the kidney people with kidney disease. There's yeah. there's some there's a, there's some of them more than you think in that in that crowd, but you can't pick them out. Let's oh, yeah. walk up to them and see that they've got a you know a shunt in their arm or uh, something. Yeah, like that. yeah. But what really makes it real interesting is you look fine, but as like you just got done saying, you're dying inside. Mm-hmm. Now how mm-hmm. how in the world can you equate that or explain that to someone? how poorly you actually do feel and that what, how much energy it takes just to get through the day. You can't um, because they'll never know exactly what you're feeling. Exactly. They'll never know what you're going through unless they've done it themselves. Right. You can explain it away all you want, but then until they have that feeling, uh, 
of wanting to do something and not being able to do it is, is, you know what? I'll compare it to a stroke. When you have a stroke and I had mine, my left bottom, my left side of my body went numb and, um, it was a TIA. It wasn't a complete full stroke. Right. Um, this was after my full stroke. Um, this was in 2019, 2000. No, it was 2022. That's what it was. 2022. Wow. That was just recent. Yeah. Last year. Um, I had <clears throat> total left body side weakness. I was in a walker for three months. My speech was slurred still to today. Every once in a while, I have a slur in my speech. My hands on my left side shake and are weak still. And my foot is still weak on that side. Uh, I don't need any walking devices or anything like that, but um, I can tell the difference and people can see it. Um, but it's like a stroke. When I had mine, <clears throat> I started losing my speech instantly. Hmm. And it got to where it was like really small and I'm listening to my voice and it's, it's not putting out the information as fast as I want it to. Yeah. And it got frustrating. And I was like trying to talk, but it was like came out this slurred, long, overhauled speech. And I'm like, ah, and that's what I compare it to. You're trying to, you, you know, you can talk regularly, but everything's coming out of your mouth slow. You know, it's just like, like watching out. it come out. <laughs> yeah, like watching it come out. And so, kidney disease in that sense is, when you get it, it's a slow, drawn-out process of waiting for a transplant. And you have to hook up to this machine, and you got to get these bags ready every day. And you get to go, you know, see people go enjoy themselves and do things that you used to be able to love and enjoy doing that you can't do anymore. And um, it, it really takes a toll on your life. Mike. More than... More than I let people think, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I, I'm sitting here looking at you, and I'm saying to myself, "Where is that person out there? That where are they?" You know, uh, we don't, we don't have to, we don't have to live with two kidneys. It, you, you could live on one very well. My brother's done it for 36 years. All right, mm -hmm. and I know people that I know. There's people out there right now, and there's going to be one of them that's listening that's either going to be the key to donating themselves or they're going to tell somebody about this. All right. Right. And so we're going to need to bombard the airwaves, if you will. And every time that you come in contact with an individual that mm -hmm. says to you, well, how you doing, Mike? Well, and the answer is not okay. I'm fine. It's mm -hmm. that I need a kidney donor. I need a kidney donor quickly so mm -hmm. that I can, I can get back on track yeah. because we think, well, actually, we know that once you do get transplanted, mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is going to be reversed. It's going to be oh, yeah. much easier on you, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's going to take away all of that hooking up and, and, and you know, spending time doing dialysis and you, when you can just jump out of bed, go to work, and be mm -hmm. back normal. That's what you yeah. look for, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's what I look forward to. Um, you know, I'm... Um, been blessed enough to work part time. A lot of people came work part time. Um, yeah. it takes that much out of their body. And to be honest with you, it takes a lot keeping a house up. My wife is uh not working right now. She's in nursing school and she only has four more months left and she graduates and she just got on gone on the dean's list. And I'm very proud of her. Oh. Um, she's doing an amazing job. Um and, you know, that comes with its own stress. Yeah. And yeah. that takes a toll. Um, this is just a stress that won't go away. That eventually will go away. It will. It, and you, you believe know. that. You believe that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and this, too, this PD will go away um, at some time. But um, having them both at the same time is um, a lot. Yeah. Well, it's but, more, it's more than some people can bear. I'm glad that yeah. you've got it. You're, you know, actually, I think you're right at the 
right at the top of your game. Although you're compromised and you're having difficulties, your mind is sharp. You're quick as quick as a cat. Even though after you stroke, you got a smile on your face. <laughs> that's just that's a good thing, Mike. That's a really good thing. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think right now, this is a a, a good time to have you tell people what you really really, really want some the, the, what what's the end game here? If you could just explain it before we we leave, what is it mm -hmm. that you really want to see? I just want to see um, you know, I, I would love to have a kidney. you know, that's what I need. So I can get back to being the dad that I used to be, the husband, the provider. That's a good that's a good hope. There is yeah. hope there. And that, that's where the prayers are going to be. Yes, sir. We're going to go to work. All right. All right. And we're going to leave it up. We're going to leave it up to the Lord, but we're going to ask him to intercede here. You know, All there's right. a, there's a need and he has the answer and he will send that person. They will be here. Mm -hmm. All right. We're not going to give up. I you have no give up in you. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah, I, I I look forward to working with you, and I want you to make sure that when you have things going on, you you give me a call. Okay, I, I will, sir. All right, and and I encourage you to take advantage of the support group that we have on Monday nights. I believe okay. you would you would really uh, uh, benefit from it, and you would be a blessing to the other people that are on there when you bring your okay. story. Okay, all right. All right. All right. We're going to we're going to just ask anybody that's listening to make sure that they pray real hard about maybe becoming uh, Mike's donor. And if they do not have that desire or urge that they would at least or ability, I guess, at at least would they at least tell people about Mike's plight and that his his need for a kidney is great. And all you have to do we got the answers. Just give us a call at Kidney Solutions, 830-285-2140. Mike is listed, listed at the University of, uh, in San Antonio, Texas, the University Transplant Program. I have all that information, and we would love for you to give us a call. Pray about it, think about it, and just remember one thing, that no matter what you do, it will affect, if you're thinking about and praying about it, it'll affect Mike and his family, his wife and mm -hmm. his two boys. So let's let's give it some prayer and let's give it some thought. But for sure, if you got any questions, you get hold of us and mm -hmm. we will straighten it out. You'll get mm -hmm. good vetted answers. And we look forward to someone stepping up for Mike. Mike, it's been a pleasure. All right, folks, happy, happy belated Easter to everybody. And remember, Mike's on the hunt for a donor. Give us a call. Until uh, the next time, keep breathing.